Hi everyone, welcome to another technical video from defaultroot.co.uk. I'm Richard and today we're going to go through um, PPP encapsulation on a serial link and we'll cover off uh, CHAP authentication on the PPP uh, link. So let's have a look at the topology. We've got two nodes, nice and basic, R1 and R2 connected with one serial interface and that's a uh, serial interface S0 slash 0. At the moment it's completely uh, vanilla, there's no IP address on there, there's no en encapsulation outside of the default which is H HDLC and um, we're going to just jump on each router, give it an IP address and change the encapsulation type. So here we are on R1, let's just do a show in S00 to prove that out for you. So no IP address, nothing nothing up there and uh, the encapsulation is HDLC. All right. So let's uh, just hop on here and do the encapsulation PPP. So uh, there we go, let's have a quick look, uh, show int, and we've got encapsulation ARPA, oh, hang on, hmm. so let's have a look at the, uh, there we go, so encapsulation PVP, and the link control protocol says it's open, so we're, we're ready to go, let's give it an IP address, 152.1.12.1, and uh, 150.1.12.2. Whoops, forget the mask. Let's just do a ping on the other side. And that's how that links up. So we're running encaps we're encapsulating with PPP. We can ping the other side, and um, that's all good. So now we're going to configure the authentication. So the way chat works is this: um, it's a, it's based on a three-way handshake. You'll hear that you'll hear that uh, a lot uh, written down in, in almost every book. So so the way the way it works. You've got a calling station, which is basically the client, and you've got a called station, which is basically the uh, the NAS or, or, or RAS box. So, so in this case, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make we'll make our, we'll designate R2 as a NAS box. So, chap. First of all, um, R1 is the initiator, so it says to R2, "Hi, can I can I uh, talk to you, please?" R2 says, "Yeah, you can talk to me um, using chap. Please." tell me your credentials, at which point R1 then uses an MD5 hash to uh, hash its username and password and send that, send, send that hash across the wire. So let's be clear here, uh, R1 is not sending the username and password across the wire, it's just sending the hash of the username and password across the wire, at which point then R2 reads the hash, says uh, yes or no to whether that matches what's in its database and then uh, allows, allows the session to, to grow, so three ways. So um, that's the default and what we're going to do, we're going to basically configure um, app right now we'll we'll configure it so it uses do something called two-way authentication so r1 will initiate it to r2 and r2 will ask r1 to authenticate uh, at the same time r2 will ask r1 uh, to uh, so it will initiate to r1 at which point r1 will ask r2 to authenticate so it's two-way because each of the nodes in the um, relationship each ask eat one another to authenticate so um, that's just the way it is out, out of the box so we're going to configure uh, chap authentication now so I'm still in the inter interface here so it's simply a question of uh, PPP um, authentication and then uh, chap on both sides so you see the state the state of the interface has gone down because it's trying to negotiate chap at the moment so um, so PPP authenticate chap on both sides and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just to help us out, I'm going to do a debug um, PPP authentication. So we'll be able to see the messages for the uh, PPP chap authentication going on here. So um, just a little bit of background, the O means outbound, the I means inbound. So we've just sent an outbound challenge with the hostname R2 and we've received an inbound challenge um, for, uh, for a hostname R1. Okay. And this is going on, so we're now saying uh, I can't authenticate, I need authorization, I can't authenticate, I need authorization. All right. This is because we haven't quite we haven't set up the um, username and password bit yet. So we've set up the authentication, but there's nothing to authenticate against. Um, so so what we do here is basically uh, tell each other side uh, the username and password for the for for, for each for one another. So let me just uh, undebug all. Let me just get rid of all that debug stuff here. So the way you do this is in is in global configuration mode. You do username, and then you do the uh, the host name of the of the remote side, and then the password, and you give it a password. Okay, and then we do this on on the other side as well. So uh, 
on, on R1 now will have a username R2, which is the remote side, password Cisco. And these are case sensitive, you have to uh, be careful of this, so make sure that both of those both of those match. Uh, let me just pop the, oh, we're too late now because we missed it, but um, I wanted to do a debug just, just to watch that coming up. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll just shut the interface and then you can see the conversation going on again. Let me do a shut. And then we'll do a no shut. So let's just watch the PPP um, challenge and handshake and uh, success go on. Yep, there we go. So let me just uh, unall that. So here we go. So, the first, so we're, we're, we're starting the session. We're initializing it. We're sending out the challenge to R2. Sorry, from, from R2 to R1. We're receiving the challenge from R1. We're responding to R1. And um, we're receiving the, uh, the response back from, from, our, from, our, from R1 back to us as well. Okay, and uh, and then we we receive a, a success. We we send an outbound success to to R1 to say, yep, you've you've passed the credentials. Welcome aboard, and we've received the um, the success from R1 saying, uh, yep, you authenticated as well. So let's let's have a chat, and then you see the, uh, the you see the L LCP come up here, uh, and then you see the IPCP and stuff like that come up. All the different protocols come up after that. So that's um, that's that's two-way authentication. That's the way that works. Oh, and by the way, if you want to if you want to change it, so so by um, w w by default it'll send the it'll send the host name. So um, we didn't actually say what the username was. Yeah, we just told it what the password was, and then we and in the global configuration we set what the username was to match the other side. But what you can do is you can send. Um, so if I wanted to send, uh, so PPP chap. Um, I can send a different host name, so this would be um, like my username. So if I wanted, to see, so I'm Rich, right? So if I wanted to say, right, um, my name is not R2, it is Rich. Um, and if I just do a debug uh, PPP authentication over here, and I tear down this uh, this circuit and then bring it up again. What I should see is a fail. Yeah, so I'm coming in from Rich, not R2 anymore, inbound from R2. I'm not coming up because I don't know who the heck Rich is. So uh, so now I'll just do a, um, a, you do a username, Rich, password, Cisco. Um, and I didn't set the piss password, did I? Did I? And there we go. So um, so so changing changing the uh, the host name to to Rich. Uh, fixed all that, so the password did match anyway. So, all right. So we've done two-way authentication. So let's do let's do one-way authentication now. So this is more like the um, the client on the on the internet trying to connect to uh, to a NAS. So like a more more akin to sort of a VPN user. So you uh, you got your road warrior out on the on the on the uh, on the internet, and he wants to dial into you. So uh, he knows his username and password, and you know his username and password, but you don't necessarily need to ask him. Uh, so he doesn't necessarily ask, need to ask you to authenticate uh, the NAS to him. You see, so it's a one-way sort of thing. You don't need to do two-way. So um, basically, what what we what we do is on the calling side, we um, we designate it as only to um, to respond to the authentication attempt from from R2. Yeah. So the only the so only the only the um, the called side needs to be or needs to authenticate its remote user, not 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 two-way. Okay, so um, so the way we do this is, is quite simple, really. So let me just get rid of this. Um, let's get rid of this user user on here. What was it? Host name, yeah. Host. Let's get rid of that. Um, the way we do this is on the on the calling side. You go into the interface, and uh, whereas let me just show the uh, let me show the current configuration. This is the current configuration. PPP authentication chap. Yeah. So instead of just that, we do PPP authentication chap. And then we say call in, call in. Okay. So let's just shut this. Um, let's do a deep and do uh, debug PPP authentication again. Okay, we'll do a no shut. And then this time it's just a one-way authentication, so it's not as it's not as um, it's convoluted as last as the last time you saw. We're much more debug than that, and. Um, you see everything still come up, yeah. And um, on this time, you, you, you know, you're not sending, you're not, you're not, you're not. Cha R1 is not challenging, challenging R2. Yeah, R1 is not challenging R2 to authenticate itself. It's just uh, sending the response back to uh, to R2 to authenticate R1. Yeah. So that's one way authentication. Okay, so I guess we've covered. Um, 
two way authentication, one way authentication, and we've uh, shown you how to uh, you can you can tweak the chap um, authentication with with the host name and a password. And um, but that's it for today. Hopefully you got some uh, some insight into PPP and uh, chap authentication. It was a little bit rushed today. I really didn't have an awful lot of time to prepare for the video, so we just went straight and um, hopefully the, the take was enough. If there's anything wrong with the video, I apologise. Um, send me out some comments on it. Um, give me some feedback on it. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. It's really nice to have the, um, the, su the support from the community that we've been seeing. Um, we really want to make this a great place for people to come and uh, talk about technical issues. So, you know, please give us some feedback at defaultroot.co.uk. Send me an email, personal email, that's fine, rich at defaultroot.co.uk. I'll certainly try and respond to, uh, to most of, to any of those. And um, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks very much.